Welcome back to part two of our series on how to repair and build a shower after a major failure of the previous shower. In part one, we did all of our demolition and our investigation about what we need to do next for the underlying structure. Today, we are going to be repairing all the underlying structure and doing the prep work for a nice, smooth tile job. That will include how to get your walls nice and flat for a proper tile job and how to repair any water damage. So first things first, how do you know if you need to replace any of the underlying structure under a failed shower. Well, one, it's pretty easy to tell if your wood is rotten. So if it's rotten, it's brittle, it's falling apart, it's wet, soaking wet, it's like a sponge, you could wring it out, then it's definitely needing to be replaced. But there's a middle ground that you need to pay attention to, and I'll show you what that is. So this is the tool that you're gonna need. It is a pin moisture meter. And what you do is actually stick the two probes into the piece of wood and it will give you a reading of the amount of moisture contained within the wood. This one's pretty simple. It has a low, medium, and high rating. If you're hitting that high rating, it's probably a pretty good chance you need to replace it. Let's show you the normal reading that we have here on the wall. There was no water intrusion here on the wall, so we're gonna show you what this reads. Now this has two settings, wood and building. Building is for other materials like wallboard, but obviously we need wood for this application. So we're gonna click it to wood and we're gonna stick the probe into the two x four here on the wall. Now I know there's no moisture intrusion. We do live in the south, so the moisture content is a little bit higher. So that is good. Let's check out what we have on the floor. So you can see on the plywood subfloor here where the shower was leaking. You can see the water uh, discoloration of the wood. There's a tiny little bit of delamination here. But let's see what the moisture content is here. Oh, you can see we're still hitting about 18 and a half right here. You can hear it beeping and it's hitting about 18 and a half, 17 and a half over here, almost 19 right there. So that tells me the moisture content is pretty high still in this wood. Now we, there's been no moisture intrusion here for over a month. We've had things removed for over a month. So that water is still sitting in this uh, subfloor. So every job is gonna be different. I measured between 17 and 20% moisture in this area where it was leaking. We're gonna remove that top layer of subfloor, but every job is gonna be completely unique. So you're gonna to have to check and modify and do things according to the problem that you have. So we've got our subfloor replaced. Everything is going to be job specific. So your job might be a little bit different than this, but our next move is to straighten out our walls to receive our den shield, a wallboard on there, so we can have a perfectly dead flat surface for our tile on the wall. And in order to make our walls nice and flat, we're gonna do one of two different things. We are going to use an old hand plane, and we're gonna plane down the studs that are too high. So you saw earlier, my level was rocking back and forth on this stud in particular, probably because it's uh, twisted and this corner is sticking out proud of the wall. So we're gonna hand plane that corner down, but there's another thing we might need to do, like I said, and that is if our shower pan is too, uh, or not wide enough for the spot, we're gonna need to sister up some of these studs on our shortest wall to bring it into the position where the shower pan can be screwed into it. So those are the two different things you need to do. Make your walls dead flat and fit it properly and perfectly for that shower pan so it's not moving around where it shouldn't be. Now as you're planing those walls or fixing those walls, however you do it, make sure you're constantly checking all the way across your studs to see where you have a high spot. Looks like I've still got some work to do right here. So if sistering up a stud or planing down a problem stud like I was just doing isn't working for you, you can also shim a stud. So we've got some shims here. If you have a problem stud that's set back from the rest of the wall, you can do that. It doesn't work if you've got to do the whole wall, although you could do it. Uh, it kind of gets a little tedious like that, but 
If you just got one or two studs that's a problem, that is no issue. You can also do what's called wet shimming. Now, something that's just as important as making your walls dead flat to receive your wall board is making your corners nice and square. Now you may also run into things like this. This is the old pipe for the shower head and it actually sits proud of the wall. So it's sticking out. Now when we had the fiberglass uh, shower here before, that didn't matter. But since we are putting wallboard up, that does matter. We are gonna take it out anyway, but make sure you pay attention to small details like that. So throughout this process, one of the things you wanna do is continually dry fit your shower pan in here to see if things are going along as they should be. So remember how important it is to have a dead flat wall, not only for your tile and the tile installation, but also for your shower pan. You can see in the back corner here that we've sistered up a stud to bring that out so our shower pan is sitting flush. We've also, as you saw just a second ago, planed this stud down to be nice and flat. So our wall now is dead flat. But in fitting the shower pan, we discovered something else. Let me show you what that is. So this is why you want to dry fit your pan and measure properly if you're putting this into a renovated space. If it's a new space, you can measure everything out perfectly the way it needs to be. But you can see we've got about a quarter inch gap here. So this is actually measured across 48 and a quarter. It is too wide. You can see on the other side, we're right against our stud. Now it looks as though we can use two shims here. These are eighth inch shims and get that set in there flush. So here's why it's important to do this shimming on the shortest wall. You're gonna need a lot of shims for this because we're gonna have to double shim it all the way up on each stud. And if we were to do it on this long wall, that would be absolutely ridiculous. We'd have to build and fur out this entire wall, take out the cabinetry, and that's just not feasible. Now I'm probably gonna use that combination of both sistering up studs and shims because I just don't have enough of these shims cut to do the entire wall all the way from floor to ceiling. So it's really up to you how you fill that gap in and get this shower pan completely perfectly set against every single wall. And remember, another incredibly important step is to make sure everything is square. If every corner is not square and everything is not plumb, then you're going to run into issues later. So, Make sure your structure underneath is perfect and you'll have a much easier time installing your shower pan and your tile. So in addition to the shimming on the other side, we've got one more problem stud here where we need to do some hand planing. It's just got a bend to it from about this point to about a foot above the floor. So after that, we should be good to go for the shower pan installation, the den shield wallboard installation, and the tile. Now I'm not gonna do any sort of instruction about how to install your new plumbing for your shower. You can find that on the plumbing channels out there. Their information is gonna be top notch. Although I'm gonna do it properly, we're not gonna spend much time on it. It's all about getting the rest of the shower done. So remember to refer back to our first video on how to selectively demo things, how to demo things properly and investigate what you need to do. Just don't go blow out every wall if you don't need to. Selectively demo it and investigate where you need to do your repairs. So the next video is a big video and it's an important video. We're gonna be setting the shower pan and we'll talk about two methods to do that, either with mortar or a non-expandable foam. We'll be showing you how to install the den shield and waterproof everything. And then we will also be tiling our walls. So remember for this video, for this step in the process, two of the biggest things, dead flat walls, plumb walls, and square corners. Get those done and you'll be very successful. Now go check out this video right here which shows you exactly how to hang a Larson Easy Hang storm door. Have a great day, we'll see you next time, bye.